this is going to be my conversion slash reversion slash whatever you want to call it story. Uh, basically how I came to Islam. I was holding off on making this video originally because I wanted to smooth things over with my parents and sort of foster a little bit more understanding with them. But then I really thought hard about it and how I came to Islam doesn't really involve my parents and um, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a long process with my parents and I don't want to delay telling my conversion story. So without further ado, um, little baby Melissa uh, was raised and born into a Catholic family, uh, was baptized and then uh, made her confirmation and uh, communion and everything, as all good Catholics do. Uh, she was in church choir. Okay, I'm going to stop talking about myself in the third person. Um, I was in church choir. I was in passion plays. I, as a child, I was um, very religious -y, or I had the fear of God instilled in me. I remember once I accidentally tried to uh, steal, well, okay, I took a map from a pancake house because I thought it was like a free map. And when I got home, I realized that it cost money. And I stayed up the whole night crying that Jesus wasn't going to forgive me and that it was going to be this big disaster. So anyway, I mean, I was fairly religious as kids go, I guess. And I went to Catholic middle school and then actually Catholic high school. Um, Catholic high school, they sort of, kind of encouraged us to question our beliefs a little bit, uh, but it wasn't really anything to write home about. So then I went to college and um, church was no longer a obligation, so I stopped going. I hung out with a lot of atheists. I started making a lot of jokes at the expense of uh, Christianity and just kind of not feeling connected to anything to do with Catholicism. And also I was kind of just trying to figure out college at the time, so I guess my faith just wasn't a priority for me at that time in my life. So fast forward, um, so I met uh, Muslim people through my engineering classes and they sort of blew away any stereotypes I had left over from the whole 9-11 mess because I was in 7th and 8th grade when 9-11 happened and American media had a field day with the Muslim agenda and all that. Um, but I became quite good friends with um, the Muslims on campus and I don't know, I just really loved learning different things um, about varying religions, but really only casually learning. So fast forward to after my sophomore year of school. Uh, actually had a really bad breakup with this guy that now is just not even go there kind of thing. But anyway, I met this Muslim man and he was a good friend of mine from the year before in classes. Um, I mean, an acquaintance really. But anyway, he saw me upset and he asked me what was wrong and I just kind of like unloaded everything that was wrong onto him because I really didn't feel like I had someone to confide in at that point and I really trusted him. I mean, I knew he was Muslim. He was the president of the MSA. He was um, like he had a girlfriend or pre-marriage woman. Uh, in London and I knew all this about him and it just made me really trust him. And through him I started learning about um, how Muslims pray five times a day and uh, I learned about Juma and because he would go to Friday prayer and I uh, actually bought a Quran because I wanted to learn more about his religion. Uh, and I started reading Quran. I got about only four or five surahs in when uh, basically, um, this is hard for me to talk about, I'm sorry, but 
basically this man did something to me that uh, I can't talk about. It's personal and it's really, really bad. And so after that, I wanted really nothing to do with Islam, but not only nothing to do with Islam, I just didn't want anything to do with religion in general. I stopped. Uh, originally, when I had first met this kid, uh, his faith in Islam had made me want to start going to church, so I had started going to church more and trying to connect with my religion more. So. Anyway, this thing happened, and I was sent into a kind of a major depression. Um, I dealt with depression on and off, but never saw anyone or labeled it as depression throughout high school, really, um, and the beginning of college. But this was the first time I really felt um, major, major depression. Um, again, I never gave up on God. Uh, but it was more of like, I prayed to him only in times of desperation when I was just crying hysterically. I just said, you know, like, help me or how could you do this to me kind of thing. Um, so let's fast forward because that's just a dark period of time in my life. About two or three years later, I started grad school. And I moved back to New Jersey, which is where my family was from. And um, in grad school, I actually met an Egyptian boy. Uh, well, he's my age, so he's not a boy, but <laughs> you get the idea. And he uh, was Muslim. And for Ramadan, um, he didn't have his family and hadn't seen his family for a long time because when he left Egypt he couldn't return because of his visa problems for whatever reason. Um, and I kind of felt um, bad for him, I guess, in that he didn't have his family to celebrate Ramadan with. So I uh, volunteered to read Quran with him. Um, basically, every night we would read a surah and then just call each other and talk about any questions that I had being uh, that I wasn't raised Muslim. And so that brings me to this giant Quran, um, which is translated and explained by Muhammad Assad. It is actually uh, beautiful, like it has beautiful Arabic artwork. Um, and it's got like gold leaf and everything like that. And it has, uh, inside, it has uh, the English, the Arabic, and the Arabic transliteration. And not only does it have that, but it has extensive, extensive footnotes that reference hadiths, um, reference scholars, uh, just tons of references in here that say you read a sentence and the English doesn't really make sense. Usually there's a footnote, and the footnote kind of explains what's going on. So I definitely, even though this is a very thick book, um, I definitely love this Quran. It has taught me a ton. Um, and any questions I have are usually answered by um, something in there. So, yeah. Fast forward after that, um, I remained friends with this guy, and uh, for a while I guess I felt like I didn't have faith. I knew that I believed in God, but I started questioning the whole Trinity thing and sort of why we prayed to a number of saints as Catholics, and not to God directly. And um, Basically, I just sort of started coming to Islam again, and I felt that it almost gave purpose to the th the bad thing that had happened to me in college, because even though it was a bad thing, it was my first experience with Islam, and it brought me to Islam, and almost opened my eyes then, but unfortunately the door was shut and maybe it just wasn't the right time for me but for me to come back full circle to Islam and start reading about Islam again I just felt like 
called to Islam this time. And I felt like I was ready. And um, so in addition to reading Quran, I also started reading the Bible because I really felt that I was seesawing between Islam and Catholicism. Um, I think in college I never thought to myself I have the ability to convert or revert or change my religion. Uh, that was just never something that seemed like an option for me. Uh, but this point in my life I had um, the previous summer to right now, I had actually went to um, a basically therapy place for what had happened to me with this Muslim guy in the past. And uh, I was in a better place. I started learning to ask for what I wanted and really like I'm just proud of I guess the fact that I was able to get past what had happened and um, so now, like I came to Islam, my perspective was different. I, I realized, hey, I can want to change religions if that's what I think is right for me. And I can question these things in Catholicism that have never quite made sense to me. So, uh, in addition to reading Quran, I picked up a book, Welcome to Islam, A Convert's Tale by Lucy Bushill Matthews. And this book um, was actually a pretty good intro to Islam um, because intertwined in her convert story she has uh, things about the pillars of Islam and um, I didn't know about Hajj till I read this and sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And I didn't know that you faced the Kaaba and just different little things that were intertwined in this book. Um, I don't know, it didn't really, I didn't feel connected to it at all, but I did feel like I started to learn about Islam more, um, more than just what the Quran was teaching me. So then, uh, about that time I started watching YouTube videos of people's conversion stories, and I started reading this book, Daughters of Another Path. Experiences of American Women Choosing Islam. So this is written by a Christian mom whose daughter converts to Islam. Uh, and then she sent out a survey around the country and has replies from 53 other women that also converted to Islam. And what their stories are um, asks a lot of different questions. Why they converted? Uh, do they wear hijab? Uh, what are the rights of Muslim women, how are they raising their kids, etc, etc. But anyway, the big thing about this book that resonated with me is one, it helps me understand what my mom might be going through better. Uh, and two, it uh, the stories of conversion that I came across both on YouTube and in this book, I just started bawling. Uh, I started crying hysterically when I, I read these and watched these different conversion stories because they just resonated with me. I I truly felt Islam. I can't explain it. It just felt like I was called to Islam. And um, I was planning on saying my Shahada during Ramadan this year, as uh, you might have known from a different video of mine. But... Uh, I thought about it, I, um, since my only friend was this Egyptian boy, I wanted to be in touch with a, uh, a sister so I could ask some more personal questions and sort of hang out with if I wanted to. So I contacted the MSA at my school and uh, they gave me the name of a sister who is uh, awesome by the way and has been there for me and started taking me to Friday prayer even before I was Muslim. and. Uh, I just got to learn that way about uh, different aspects like hijab and prayer and uh, in addition to reading Quran, any questions I had, uh, she was very knowledgeable on the hadiths too, which was really great. So um, 
the imam, the first time that I went to prayer before I was Muslim, I told him, I'm thinking about converting. And he said to me, uh, take your time, but don't wait too long. So what he was trying to say was, if you know in your heart that you are Muslim and that you want to practice Islam, don't delay because you can convert and then learn more and strive to be a better Muslim. But, you know, you don't want to, you, tomorrow is not guaranteed and you don't want to pass away without having said your Shahada uh, if you really know in your heart that you're Muslim. So I decided to say my Shahada during uh, Islamic Awareness Week at my school. And uh, that's it. That's where I am now. Um, so that was basically my, I guess, four or five year journey to Islam, um, although it had interruptions in it. Um, Alhamdulillah, I am so thankful to be where I am now. And uh, inshallah, my parents will come around and uh, inshallah, this helped someone in some way. Um, if anyone has any questions about my conversion slash reversion, um, feel free to contact me. Uh, I'd love to be a resource for other reverts out there if they need uh, help in any way. So thanks for listening. Good night.